of the, of the Fraser. Folks who live in, in Vancouver have you know pretty good public transit options, but folks who live in um, you know Delta, Surrey, White Rock, Langley, Chilliwack, Abbotsford, you know the people who are doing the majority of the driving that is where all the the CO2 emissions are coming from. Those folks are actually the ones who have the least options. So you know you create a carbon tax, that sort of thing. The idea is it's supposed to get you out of your car. How are you going to get out of your car if you don't have an option? How are you going to get out of your car if you don't have public transit, if you don't have light rail? So there are really good solutions that are out there uh, when it comes to reducing demand and reducing supply. Um, I guess uh, the one thing I'll tell you is that there's an ongoing process. We're meeting on a regular basis to talk about both the transportation issues and the tankers. Uh, every Wednesday there's a meeting to talk about the oil tankers in the Burrard Inlet. And uh, the last couple of weeks we've been trying to start to actually meet here. Uh, we usually meet at the Wilderness Committee office, but if you're interested in being part of that conversation this week, um, on Wednesday night at around 6 o'clock, come on down here or you're here already, look for me or we'll try to make an announcement up from the stage and I'll give you an opportunity to, to come and be part of that conversation. Because there is a lot going on, the opposition's growing. There's about 80% opposition to oil tankers off our coast when you actually pull people and ask them in BC. And, uh, and a poll was recently done to see how many people support the expansion of the terminal who live in Burnaby and the surrounding area. And only 35% of the people said they even support the existing pipeline. 31% said they'd expand and support an expansion. So even the people who live in the area where they'd actually get the jobs don't want to see it there. They know what happened because of that oil spill. They're still feeling the effects of it. Um, so I guess that's all I'm going to say for now is uh, if you're interested in getting involved, there's a lot that needs to be done. There's a lot that's being done already. I'm going to hand it back over to Jane, and she's going to tell you some more about the big picture stuff. But thanks anyway. Oh, my name's Ben West, and I'm a Healthy Communities Campaigner for the Wilderness Committee. And this is Pat. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about pipelines. One of the things that pipelines and tankers have in common is that they are all disasters waiting to happen. And when something goes wrong, there is no such thing as good recovery. You don't get, it's not that you don't get full recovery, you don't get decent recovery. So uh, there's more stuff that's stinky about some of the things that are happening with pipelines right now. Uh, ben knows more about Enbridge and what's happening in Canada. Uh, there's a pipeline that will go from Alberta to Port Arthur, Texas. It goes through parts of Canada and through the United States both. And I want to talk a little about that right now. That's the one that Ben just referenced where people went to the White House, biggest act of civil disobedience in American history, thousands of people. Uh, one of the things that's wrong with that pipeline that intersects with what's, what Occupy is about is all of the stinkiness about it. The State Department, which has to approve it, has ignored scientists who have detailed the scientific evidence for why it ought not be. Instead, they are listening to lobbyists for, who are you know, the money end of this thing. And the lobbyists are saying, oh, no problem, we got it covered, it's going to be okay. That's not the way it's supposed to work. We are supposed to make our collective decisions on the basis of something that is justifiable, on the basis of science, and in the interest of people, all of us, not in the interest of only a very, very narrow few who will profit from it. Um, so everything about Keystone is wrong. Uh, the purpose of not only Keystone, but I think just about every pipeline I've ever heard of at least, is to increase the rate at which we burn the planet. That's the bottom line purpose. Uh, Keystone will double the amount that can be sent through per minute, per hour, per day. It's going to double it. And it's sending it to Port Arthur, Texas. Why Port Arthur? It's a free trade zone. That means that the people who are making profits don't have to pay fees or anything. They don't have, they don't have to pay in. All they do is rape and, ta and take and pillage. And what we get back in exchange is a little you know, spill here, a little damage there. There have been at least three pipeline disasters in the United States in the last 12 months that made it to headline news. There have been some small ones too. Every pipeline is a disaster waiting to happen. And they're trying to give us more of them. If these pipelines go through, the knock-on effect 
the primary effect will be to speed up the rate at which the Alberta tar sands get mined. That is to say, we are going to speed up the rate at which we burn the planet, at which we uh, emit all the CO2 that is involved in the mining process. And the way you transform that bitumen into something you can put into your gas tank is not something you want to know about, but it's bad. And then you burn it in your, bas in your gas tank, right? The Alberta tar sands are about extending car culture. It's not about energy independence. It's not about anything other than cars. One of the ways you know is that ordinary uh, energy extraction is about giving us more energy. With the Alberta tar sands, it's kind of a wash. You don't get ahead on the energy front. What you do is you put natural gas in one end. It's got a certain amount of energy in it. And what you get out the other end is something you can put in your gas tank. And the amount of energy that's in it is almost exactly comparable to the amount of energy that went in. What you're doing is you're taking natural gas that you can't run your car on, and you're transforming it into something you can run your car on. That's what it is all about. And extending car culture is a little like saying that we want to hurt the planet faster and more. It's not the route we want to take. So I hope Ben will address specifics that have to do with Canadian stuff, because I'm not a Canadian. I don't know that part. So um, I saw a puzzled look on your face when she was talking about the natural gas, so I was just going to add one little bit of detail. Yeah. So, uh, so you, you probably heard about fracking. Who's heard of fracking? Yeah. I agree. That is horrible. So just in case you're not familiar with it, I'll give you a real quick thing. So basically, just like with oil, we're running out of the easy to find natural gas. Uh, the gas that's trapped in, trapped in shale in rock formations, we're now sending pressurized water mixed with chemicals deep underground to push the gas back out again. And about half of what you send down into the ground stays down there. The rest of it you leave in a pool and just let the chemicals go off into the atmosphere. It's not sustainable. It's about as far from sustainable as anything you can imagine. In fact, it's, um, it's, it's a really, really big problem. And what most people don't know is that actually BC is becoming one of the number one places for fracking anywhere in North America. Um, there's big, big operations all over the United States. You might have seen that movie Gasland that was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Documentary, uh, where people are actually lighting their tap water on fire. Well, believe it or not, there's people in the northeast of BC right now who are doing that. It's actually happening in BC as we speak. Because this water gets into groundwater, it comes out of your well, you know, people are then being exposed to all kinds of really nasty chemicals, and there's a big pushback against it. Um, the, the awareness of this is growing around the world. France just launched a moratorium on fracking. Uh, the province of Quebec has put a, a temporary moratorium on it while a health study is done. Um, you know, there's a, there's a variety of studies that are being done in the United States and different places, and Jane can probably tell you a bit more about that. Um, but the part that I think is important to understand about fracking, and it ties into to the energy issue just in a larger sense, is that one of the number one demands for, uh, for energy that we're getting in BC is actually to run these fracking operations. They're very energy intensive, they're very water intensive, and guess where the demand for the, uh, for the gas is coming from? Anybody, anybody want to guess? Indirectly the United States, but even, even more clear though, the tar sands is actually where the, the demand is coming from because we're running out of the easy to get tar sands oil. Believe it or not, those giant open pit mines that you've seen the pictures of, that's the easier to access tar sand stuff. We're actually running out of that. We've only extracted about 3% of what's in the tar sands, but most of that tar sands oil is actually even deeper underground. And what they're doing is they're doing what's called steam assisted gravity drilling wells, or SAG-D, which is basically the same thing as fracking, but for tar sands bitumen. Uh, they're pumping water mixed with chemicals deep underground to try to get the bitumen, which is basically sand and clay mixed with oil, to then be heated up so you can pump it back out with you like you would from a natural, from like a, an old-fashioned oil rig. So the problem with that is that it's extremely water intensive. It's extremely polluting. You still have to completely decimate the landscape to do it. Um, and now you're not only talking about a uh, substance once you get it out of the ground that isn't even really a good fuel. Um, the reason why you need natural gas to make uh, a fossil fuel that you can use in your car, a hydrocarbon, is because it's got a